Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be continuing our look at the fantastic show The Last of Us, reacting to the scenes and breaking down the medical science. This is episode five. As with my previous videos, this is going to be littered with spoilers and probably some scenes that are pretty gory too. So with that out of the way, let's crack on with it. Henry and Sam here are no doubt in a calorie deficit given the little that they're eating. We talked in episode three about the dangers of refeeding syndrome. And right now, if you did a blood test on these guys, they might be tending towards starvation ketoacidosis. Without enough carbohydrate in your diet, that's your body's preferred energy source, your body switches to breaking down your stored fats, and this results in ketones being released into your blood and makes your blood more acidic. I've seen this before in a young patient with an eating disorder, and it makes you feel really unwell, fatigued, lethargic. We're not really seeing those symptoms with Henry and Sam yet, but if they carry on this path with not eating enough, that's going to be where they're heading. This mechanism may be familiar to you as it's the same mechanism that the keto diet is exploiting. So your fats aren't as efficient an energy source as carbohydrates. So you can eat more of the non-carbohydrate food stuff, so fats, proteins, without gaining weight, providing you eat very little carbohydrates. Whoa, <laughs> Jesus Christ, I thought it was a while that we'd seen any of the infected. And given the numbers here, it was well worth the wait. Who the hell is this guy? He's a proper, proper big boy. We've seen a few variations of the infected. They come in a few flavors. We have the standard edition. We've seen enough of them. We have seen the clicker, the sonar wielding one with a fungus around the eyes. And now we have this one, the big boy. Clearly this is because the computer game needed some variation in its enemies, but there is some science in this in the simple sense that infectious diseases are a spectrum of severity and they do different things to different people. Look at COVID, a mild disease in a vast number of people yet deadly to others. And so why is this? Is there something different in the host? So did the person that was infected have an immune system that was primed to react differently? Certainly with COVID, age was a big risk factor for poor outcome. Or was there some difference in the pathogen, a particular strain or perhaps a large infectious dose or an infection via a particular route that led to a more severe infection? So bringing it back to these big boy meatheads here, are these humans that have had a genetic predisposition to react to the fungus in this way? Maybe it induces them to have a craving to eat more. Some illnesses do that, we call it hyperphagia. Or maybe this isn't a host factor, but the result of the fungus invading in a certain way. For example, invading the pituitary gland, the adrenals or the testes, resulting in production of more anabolic hormones, meaning they end up getting really stacked. Either way, I'm not too sure, but they're here and it's not outside the realms of possibility given <laughs> You know, we're suspending our disbelief somewhat anyway. Whoa! Decapitation, a favorite on this channel. We've seen this a few times on the channel before. Decapitation is one of the few situations where someone who isn't a doctor can declare someone dead. Essentially, there's no point doing CPR because clearly it's not survivable. And that's self-explanatory because where would you even start doing rescue breaths? Into the disconnected head or into the top of the neck? My blood is medicine. Oh, oh my God, what? This better not work. <laughs> For the sake of the science, 
that have been underpinning the show. I get what Ellie is saying and there is some kind of logic, but zero practical chance of this working. The concept is that of convalescent plasma. So someone who has had an infection and has survived would have built up antibodies. They then donate their blood. That blood is filtered for its plasma, which is the liquid part of the blood that also contains antibodies. Then this plasma is infused into someone who has the disease, giving that person passive immunity due to the donated antibodies. As you could probably tell by that explanation, it is not a cheap process. So usually reserved for diseases that don't have a lot of other treatment options like rabies, which funny enough is a disease that has also inspired zombie movies. But yeah, practically you are not gonna get anywhere near enough antibody into someone rubbing a few drops of blood you're probably just gonna irritate the wound even more. Even if you had some rudimentary equipment, then you actually drew blood from Ellie and then transfused it into Sam, this would still have massive issues as you can't just give blood products from one person to another. You need to cross match the blood. So make sure they are compatible blood groups and test the two samples by mixing them together to make sure they don't react. Otherwise you could get a massive life-threatening transfusion reaction, which obviously would put you in much worse shape and you can't really imagine much worse shape than being infected. If however, you were able to do the whole convalescent plasma process properly with Ellie's blood, there is a possibility this could be an effective therapy. Although it does depend heavily on why it is that Ellie is immune, it may actually be other parts of her immune system that are giving her the edge over the fungus. But yeah, we're certainly not seeing anything close to that process here. So Sam somehow survives I ain't gonna be happy here. That sounds a bit wrong. I obviously want Sam to survive. I'm not some kind of monster, but from a science point of view, I'd be, I'd be disappointed. <laughs> wow, there you go. Unfortunately for Sam, the science has been upheld. Poor little kid. What the f**k? What? Oh my god. Well, I guess he didn't have a choice. That is brutal, man. Give me the gun. Give me the gun, Henry. Give me the gun. No, Henry, mate. <laughs> oh my god. What an episode, man. Sort of uh, give you these great characters with one hand and taketh away with the other. Absolutely crazy. So there you go, another fantastic episode. A bit of a slow start, but that set piece at the end blew me away. It was so good. And you realize all these characters are disposable. Pretty much everyone you meet is gonna die. Apart from Elliot Joel, that would be a hell of a twist. So I hope you've enjoyed my look at the medical science. If there's anything I've missed or theories that you have, please let me know in the comments down below. I love reading your comments and they inform my future videos. And a quick note to say there won't be any videos for the next five weeks as I'm actually traveling in South America. And I'm a little bit gutted that I can't follow this series through and watch it kind of as the series is being released, but I will be catching up on the show when I'm back, so watch out for that. As always, thank you for all the support on the channel. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing too. So I'm off for a little bit. If you wanna catch up with what I'm up to, then check out my Instagram page. I'll probably put a few images on there. If not, do not worry. I'll be back soon enough with some more videos. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you then.